G'day guys and gal, Warhammer 40k lore is uh, thick with two C's. Decades of storytelling, hundreds of novels, thousands of fun facts. There is a shitload of stuff going on and a lot of it you probably aren't even aware of. Niche fun facts buried in layers of retcons and obscene amounts of lore that only a mega nerd who dedicates their entire life to Warhammer would know about. AKA me. I know there is already a part one to this series with exactly the same title, but as I learn more and more about this beautiful bitch called Warhammer 40K, I realize that there are significantly higher amounts of obscure lore than just 10 things. So why not make this a series? After all, the first episode slapped pretty hard and got some good lovin'. And if there's two things I like most, it's slappin' and lovin'. Before we get started, I'm a man of my word. As promised, this Saturday, so tomorrow, I'll be doing a drunk stream. It's been a while since I've done one of these, but basically I'll play a game, most likely Total War Warhammer 3, because it's, you know, easy to get drunk to. And basically I'll drink till I black out and hopefully avoid saying something that will get me canceled. Previous installments have included ill-fated backflips, oh, fuck. vomiting, accidentally destroying my graphics card, and more. The more you donate, the more I drink, so at least there is some kind of financial gain from me chopping some years off my life. Stream will begin at 12 a.m. midnight, AEST, which is morning for you American folk, afternoon for my European friends, and yeah, midnight for us Aussies. But it's Saturday, so literally any time zone works pretty well. Hope to catch you there. Today I'll be going over 10 moments, themes, or characters from the lore that are not well known by the community, but still vastly interesting. Let's get into it. Kicking off this obscure list of spicy, interesting shit that nobody knows about, we have the Necron Pariahs. These rare units are blank humans who have been kidnapped and then bonded with a Necrodermis exoskeleton, essentially creating a Necron-human hybrid. The Necrons chose blanks because the Necrons fucking hate the warp, and nothing kicks the warp harder in the balls than a blank. Hence, having units that literally give the warp the downs is a huge asset to them. Another power the Pariahs have is to instill complete and absolute terror into anyone they look at. In the Kane books, the legendary Commissar is leading a pack of elite soldiers who never show fear or hesitation. They have faced Tyranids without blinking, watched flayed ones tear apart their teammates, no worries, and were shown to be complete hardcore badasses time and time again. But when they encountered a squad of Necron pariahs, they all shat the bed. They started crying and screaming in terror before running away. It was, it was pretty bad. So with such a big asset, why don't we see more of these guys in the lore? After all, they haven't really been mentioned in over a decade. Well, that's because GW decided to discontinue them. However, the in-law reason was that they were way too hard to produce due to the rarity of blanks, as well as the complicated nature of bonding them with their Necrodermis armor. On top of that, they were significantly less durable than normal Necrons, and would not regenerate if shot. Hence, Necron armies with pariahs would have to adapt their strategy and play it a lot safer than they normally would like to. Regardless, the pariahs were a cool and engaging piece of old lore that you probably weren't aware of. You know the Eye of Terra, that big gaping butthole in the middle of the galaxy, the ultimate no-fly zone, and a 1 out of 5 star holiday destination on TripAdvisor? Well, the Imperium actually tried to conquer it once. Basically, dozens of loyal Space Marine chapters were forced to undertake this Abyssal Crusade, as it was called. The Crusade ended in total disaster, as numerous chapters were annihilated, with many others turning to chaos. There was only one survivor from the whole affair, who then went on to kill the man that ordered them in there. Fair enough, I'd do the same. Despite multiple Chaos worlds being wiped off the map, the Crusade wasn't worth it in the slightest. The Eye of Terror cannot be tamed. Your body is corrupted on a microscopic level even just by entering the Eye, hence any invasion will inevitably end in your corruption if you spend enough time there. It was the biggest waste of loyalist Astarte life for thousands of years, and it resulted in Chaos raids exploding across the sector, due to them now having thousands more Astartes on their side, and thousands less Astartes to stop them. It just goes to show how retarded some of the people in charge are. You've probably heard of an STC, and if you haven't, then no, it's not a version of galactic genital warts. An STC is basically a blueprint that can be used to create all kinds of advanced technology. Over the years, the STCs have been destroyed or shattered, meaning only fragments remain that show how to make one or two basic items here or there. As such, STCs are seen as the most valuable thing in the galaxy by the Mechanicus. Like a guardsman found a shard of an STC that told them how to make a better version of a combat knife, and he was given an entire planet 
that as a thank you. But did you know that up until recently, there was a fully intact STC that if the Imperium got their hands on, would have probably given them the means to easily win the war against Chaos and all Xeno factions. What happened is that a guardsman arrived at a random planet after a bit of a space scuffle, and he discovered it to be full of centaurs. Bit random, but that's okay. Turns out the centaurs were humans who had changed their DNA to better suit the planet using a fully intact STC that they still possessed. Long story short, the STC is broken when a battle between some Knight assholes and the centaurs take place, with the centaurs getting the dub. When the guardsman is picked up and rescued, he tells his officers that the planet is a death world full of vicious xenos, aka not worth the Imperium's time or effort conquering. As if he had instead told them that it was full of ex-human centaurs that had a broken STC, the Mechanicus would have likely genocided them and taken over the world. There is likely dozens, if not hundreds, of fully intact STCs out there in the galaxy, so it's cool to see a story about one of them here, even if GW doesn't have the balls to ever give a full one to the Imperium. Something the Imperium wasn't a fan of was the existence of a planet full of hectic dinosaur kaijus. Despite the existence of said kaijus, the Imperium wanted to conquer it anyway because, you know, that's what the Imperium does. It's their fetish. However, every attempt failed as, you know, fucking kaijus. Hence the Mechanicus was like, we got this, and they deployed their titans, and lo and behold, the kaijus fucked up the titans. At this point, the Imperium was like, alrighty then, and exterminatus the planet, not just because they were sore losers, but also because they didn't want enemy factions getting a hold of kaijus and using them against the Imperium. The Mechanicus was also happy to see the planet burn, as up until then, there was nothing in the galaxy that was above a titan in the food chain, and if the Imperium figured out how to control and breed the kaijus, it would make the titan legions obsolete, greatly diminishing the Mechanicus's influence. I'm kind of sad about this one. I would not be mad about kaijus in the 40k setting. I reckon they need to give them to the Exodite Elder. Those guys are in desperate need of something that is stronger than a crab wielding a stick. Speaking of titans, did you know that there is actually a class of titan greater than an Imperator titan? You know, the titans that the Tau mistook for mountains. Yes, the Castigator Titan makes the Imperator Titan look like an old man with a blown out hip and no cartilage in his spine. It stood up straight and had remarkable mobility. It was also controlled by an AI instead of a pilot. It's said that every Titan created since were all failed attempts to recreate the original Castigator Titan, as they didn't have the required STC. There has only been one Castigator Titan seen in the setting, and he was a massive fucking asshole. Basically, a forge world with a castigator on it had been dragged into the warp. During its time in the warp, the titan was possessed by a demon. When it exited the warp, a bunch of grey knights went to say hi, and were promptly forced to kill the castigator titan because, you know, demonic possession and all that jazz. They then discovered an intact STC that would show them how to create castigators from scratch, arguably the biggest discovery in thousands of years. However, seeing that the one they found had been corrupted, along with the fact that it was basically a gigantic man of iron, aka a big no-no, the Grey Knights destroyed the STC. So no castigators for anybody. There could still be some out in the galaxy, but I doubt we'll see another one for a very long time. There are thousands of intelligent Xenos out there in the Milky Way of 40k. One of the most interesting and obscure, however, are the legendary Crave, a race of extremely old immortal Xenos. Like the average age is in the millions of years, with the youngest being hundreds of thousands of years old. They have advanced powerful bodies, capable of throwing ships around and tearing through space marines like butter. Their psychic abilities were also insane, with some Astartes comparing their prowess to the Emperor himself. They could mind control entire populations with little effort, and they were a huge threat to the Imperium, hence the Empress sent the only Primarch he could trust to get the job done, the Lion. The Lion engaged the Crave, and he dueled one of the ancient warlords. After a hectic anime tier battle, the Crave attacked the Lion's mind, and entered into his subconscious. Thinking that by removing his physical advantage of his genetically advanced body, she could rape his mind and soul. Well. She fucked up pretty badly. The Lion is a master of all his domains, both physical, mental, and spiritual. So as she started gloating that she had him by the balls, he picked her up by the throat, mind raped her so bad that she uncovered the location of her homeworld, then he killed her and he xenocided her race. 
raised than 6,457, why the line is a complete fucking badass. I choose the Crave as an example of an interesting obscure Xenos race as they were so ancient and powerful. Humanity's rise would have been a speck on their existence, a speck that ended in their own annihilation, but it speaks volume to how ancient the setting really is. It also shows the prowess of the Emperor, that he was able to completely tilt the balance of the galaxy, upheaving Xeno empires that had lasted millions of years and only a century or two. It goes to show that the Imperium isn't just another upstart empire that will be forgotten. The current setting of 40k is the most important time in the settings history and it will dictate the future of everything to come. Now for a cheeky fun one. The Mechanicus not only discovered the skull of Nikola Tesla but they have actually turned it into an EMP device because you know why the fuck not. The next interesting bit of lore is both funny and terrifying. There exists a Xeno parasite from the world of Katachan because of course Katachan has the terrifying parasites. It's called the Face Eater. A Face Eater is basically a plant that lurks in damp, humid areas, such as swamps or showers. When it detects the existence of prey, it will launch itself at their face, latching on, spraying acid into their face before suffocating its prey to death. It will then unleash its eggs into the prey's corpse, which will hatch as maggots, eating the prey before maturing and moving on to continue the process. Nasty. The real problem is that the face eaters look exactly like towels, and considering that they hang out in showers, I think you can understand how this makes them a bit problematic. They were actually released onto Necromunda to help deal with the vermin there, but that ended fucking terribly, and now the people of Necromunda don't like taking showers anymore. No wonder why it stinks like shit down there. The Imperium has a lot of contingency plans if shit goes tits up. Stuff like a bomb that will blow up Terra if the Emperor is to die is just one example. Another lesser known one is the Terminus Decree, a small wooden box with instructions inside of it. The box resides in Malkador's tomb, and only the Supreme Grand Master of the Grey Knights knows of its existence and how to open it. Yet even he does not know what is actually in it. His orders are, if the Imperium is on its last legs and everything is fucked, to open it and follow the instructions inside. But some theories include orders to kill the Emperor, in the hope that being released from his physical form will allow him to regenerate or become a god, but that is just a theory. Whatever it says is a big deal though. The instructions will either lead to the final nail in humanity's coffin, or as their last chance to save them. And the last interesting thing in Warhammer 40k lore you probably didn't know of is the fact that Zotes, a Xeno race of reptile centaur dudes, actually used to act as Tyranid diplomats. Yes, that's right. The Tyranids either enslaved or created the Zotes to suss out other Xeno races to determine if their genes would be useful for the hive mind to consume. As people caught on to the fact that their friendly neighborhood Zote was actually a Tyranid simp, they began killing the Zotes on sight. This, combined with the fact that the Zotes kept rebelling against the Tyranids, meant that the Tyranids were kind of sick of the Zotes and destroyed what few remained in their ranks. The Zotes were thought to be extinct until GW released a new Zote model and lore, stating that the few surviving Zotes had become independent mercenaries, often serving Eldar Corsairs. The remaining Zotes are incredibly intelligent, with powerful physical bodies and advanced psychic powers. Definitely not one to mess with. If it wasn't for the fact that like 99.99% of them were dead, the Zotes could have been a major player in the setting of 40k. It is funny though how old lore literally gave Tyranid diplomats, like bruh. So there's another 10 interesting 40k bits of lore you probably didn't know about. Be sure to watch part one, and if this video does well, well, I'll make more. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Only $1 per month give you access to a boatload of anime titties. Not yet including Zotes, I'm afraid. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more interesting content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.